Hey guys, how's it going? How's it going? Happy Sunday. Yeah, I can't believe it's time for another live already. Oh, awesome, Joanne. Yeah, usually I get a sample sewn up and I didn't have time, but these are super easy. So I think um, I think you guys will be fine without a sample. Uh, hey, Shana. Hey, hey, hey. Man, looks like my light back is burning pretty bright. Yeah, it's a little better. It's still kind of bright, but anyway. Hey, Cindy. Hey, girl. Miss you. Hey, Nero. Hey, Cindy, I'm going to be in your neighborhood two full weeks, except for the weekends, starting tomorrow. So just saying. All right, I wonder how many people, we got 10 on. Hey, hey, Joanne. Yeah, I know, but I think you guys might be back and I'll still be there. So I know I thought of that too. So um, depending upon what day you get back next week. We might be able to, to hit a night next week. So, yeah, Cindy, I hope everybody had a great Sunday. We're getting this weird rain down here in Texas. It's the tropical rain. So it'll be, like, really nice. And then it'll just, like, rain, 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 rain. Then it'll be really nice again. And then rain, 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 rain. And then it's cloudy and misty. And so, yeah, we've had a tropical storm kind of. If you want to call it a tropical storm, they, they're calling it that, but it really wasn't like a named one. So, yeah. Yep, nonstop raining, and I wished it would stop. We've got things we can't finish at the project because of all this rain we keep getting. It's so crazy. Hey, Carolyn. So, yeah, Cindy, um, text me when you're getting back, and then we'll figure it out from there. But, yeah, I just found out the other day. Oh, good and bad. <laughs> good, I'll be there. Bad, I'll be there. You know, one of those deals. So, but uh, yeah, the board shorts that I'm gonna make. Okay, so let me back up a little. Let me not start right where I was gonna go. So um, I had a hard time finding what they call board short fabric, which is um, polyester microfiber. So it's like a swim trunk fabric. You can find it. And I think maybe you can find it at Joann's in some places, not my Joann's. And I know for certain my Hobby Lobby won't carry it. And I, I would have to order it online. So if you guys are looking to make actual swim trunks out of this, you'll probably have to order it online or just figure out a material that you're okay with it being a swim trunk material. So that's about all I, you know, all I, all the difference is going to really be between a swim trunk and then a true like board short style. And what I'm doing, I'm just gonna do it out of camo fabric, just a straight camo fabric. But if you wanna do more of a board short look, you can do that as well. You can get on Google and look up some different variations and copy some of those. Some of them have the actual, you know, like two colors, one on each side or stripes or whatever. Be adventurous. Um, I'm also not doing the pocket tonight. Um, if you guys want to do the pocket, we can talk about that probably a little bit further down. I don't, pockets aren't hard. I just wasn't ready to take you guys there tonight. So if you feel like you want to give it a go, go for it. But um, I'll show you on the pattern piece where it's a little confusing and it's only because they're showing you where to put the pocket. And then it'll make total sense to you guys when you look at that. Because if you first look at that piece, you're like, what am I doing with this piece? So I'll show you that. Hey, Mary. Oh, yeah, Shana. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, Shana. Hey, Angela. Hey, Kayla. Hey, hey, everybody. Hey. So anyway, when you guys, um, but if you guys do order that polyester microfiber, be aware 
it's a it's not super slippery, but it's going to be slipperier than cotton. It's going to be similar to kind of the slippery of minky if you're cutting minky. So take your time to cut it. It's super thin, so you don't have like that nap of the minky that you're trying to scrunch down. Use your rotary blade and pin, pin, pin before you cut it. Don't just do like we've all been doing where you take the pattern piece and you put a weight on it and then cut around. I wouldn't do that with this microfiber. Your, your bottom piece could shift from your top piece, just from the rotary cutter going through. So I want you guys to pin this like you would pin a minky blanket to the back. And that way, when you go to cut it out, it's solid, it's not gonna move. And leave it pinned. So what I would do, and I'll go through this one more time a little later to catch everybody that's coming in, but I would take this pattern and I would just kind of lay it down on top of the fabric and then lift up and pin in a few places underneath it and just kind of keep lifting it up and then cut it out and go ahead and you know pin it again put this i'm sorry let me back up pin underneath then pin this on top cut it out and then slowly take the pins out and replace them to the cutout part underneath again so that when you go to pick it up it won't shift too and then you can just go straight into sewing. I'm just trying to keep this from shifting on you guys because I know it can be just a touch tricky. You can do it. There is a little, there's a little grab to it, but it's also going to have a little bit of a slip factor. So just be aware of that. Oh, Angela. Yeah, I wish we could. Yeah, we definitely. Hey, Sarah. Glad you could join. Hey, Mia. Oh. Oh, oh, Mia, yes, yes, definitely. Send in prayers for your grandma. Yeah, hope everything's okay. Keep us up to date, okay? Let us know how she's doing. Hey, Sandy. Hey. Hey, Mina. Aw, thanks, Mina. I know. It's okay, Mia. We get it, but I know. It, it's hard, too, to miss the lives when you really, really have some favorite ones you want to be on. I get it. But, yeah, you know. It will be a good distraction for you while you're waiting for the phone call, though. So we're with you, though, girl. Let us know. Okay. Let us know how she's done. So um, anyways, go ahead and search microfiber, um, polyester microfiber. And it's out there. It's also called board short fabric. But I didn't do so good when I put in the terms board short fabric. So you may or may not get hits on that. So you may have to go to the actual polyester microfiber as your search. And microfiber is one word. So um, yeah, but uh, there should be some cute patterns out there if you want some true microfiber. Um, realize too, this pattern, this pattern's great because it's gonna go from your kid being really little at 12 months all the way up to a size 14. So one time by, um, Right now, which is May 23rd of 2021, this pattern is 50% off. Just saying. So she's running a sale right now. So if you really want to make this, but you don't have time, don't wait. Go grab it and then make it when you have time because it's $5 right now. I don't like to um, make you guys pay for a pattern. I just could not find a free one that was worth it. And all the um, board short swim trunk patterns, there was no free ones really. So um, the ones that I did find, I think were a little bit of a stretch for you guys. I didn't want to send you down that road. It was pretty, pretty advanced. And I was surprised that was a free pattern. So um, I had to go buy one. And this was actually one of the cheaper ones I found because they are pretty pricey right now. So it's the link is in my description. If you guys want to go check it out and um, I wish it went up to men's. It does not. This person did not have one for men's, even though she has men's patterns. And I was kind of surprised that she didn't. But there are several other men's patterns out there. Um, so you could uh, definitely find one if you wanted one for a bigger size than the 14. These, these are super simple, though. You'll look at the pattern and the pattern itself. We're going to go through all this. The pattern itself. I don't want it to intimidate you because it's really three pieces, even though the pattern has several others. And I'll go over what's in the pattern as well so that you guys know how to get to what you need. 
and it's very simple. You just print them all out and put them together, and then you find the pieces. So you put the puzzle together. Don't try and figure it out and print just the pieces you need. I was even trying to do that, and I was a little confused. So I ended up printing pretty much 95% of them. I knew one or two pages I did not need. But um, the good thing about this pattern, too, if later on down the road you guys want to put in, like, um, an inside liner, they do have the swim trunk part like the i don't know kind of like a speedo in a way pattern in there and you can make that out of the net fabric or whatever you want to make it out of. you can make it out of you know whatever they're comfortable with wearing and then you could line it if you wanted to so that is an option to do hey sandra and guys if anna comes on or if she doesn't come on today's her birthday so we've got to all make sure we reach out to Anna and wish her happy birthday. She had posted on Instagram the winners or the winner to her drawing. And then she announced that it was her birthday. So, yeah, just letting just kind of letting that cat out of the bag. So anyway, let me show you this pattern. And what I'm kind of talking about, I've already cut some of the pieces out. But you'll see there's a lot of pieces I did not use. So what you're getting in this pattern is you're getting you're getting a short that goes below the knee and a short that goes above the knee. So that's a lot of those pattern pieces. That's going to take up four of those pieces, and you only use two. So you choose whether you want the length to be below the knee or above the knee, and then you cut out those corresponding ones. Then you're going to have a waistband. So that's universal. So that's five. And then you have two pockets if you want to use them. So you can ignore those if you don't. And then you have two pieces for those, um, that little speedo underneath thing. So that's why it looks like there's so many pieces. But you really only need your front and your back and your, and your waistband. So you just have to choose below the knee, above the knee, cut accordingly. Cut the size out and cut your waistband. That's it. So don't let it scare you. Um, the other good thing about it is make sure when you go to print this out that you print it at 100% scale. You don't print to fit the sheet or whatever. You got to make sure your scale is 100% true. And they do give you one that has a box. It's this one. It's the uh, below knee back has the box to measure. So if you print that one first and measure your box right here, one by one or four centimeters by four centimeters, depending upon um, what you work by, um, make sure that's on. Right. That, that's correct. And then, you know, your print settings are right. And then go print everything else out and you, you'll be spot on for sizing. If you don't do that, your sizing is going to be off. So then when you go to put it together, you don't have to do any cutting of anything. You don't have to trim anything because she took care of that for you. I was so happy. So what that means, if you've never done this and there's, I kind of liked this pattern to teach you guys how to work with these patterns because these are becoming more and more and more the norm where you don't trim and I love it. So what happens is you print them all out and I'm gonna undo a little bit here so you guys can see. All right, so the one that I just undid has this blue line going down, and you can see it. And then part of the pattern looks like it's coming past that blue line. That's okay, don't worry about that. Leave that blue line, that's the blue, that part goes on the bottom of the two pieces you're putting together. The top piece goes to the edge, and you see how this goes all the way to the edge or pretty much to the edge. I mean, you don't need it that eighth of an inch, you know where it's going. So you'll take this edge right here and you're going to lay it right along that blue line and tape it. And then that way your pattern, it'll, it'll be continuous, even though you, you'll have a little tiny bit that you won't see just it's there you know your eye knows it's there you're seeing it coming through just because it's not printed doesn't mean it's incorrect so just realize match everything up really good so you match your bottom lines match your bottom lines 
or this one to the bottom line right here and there and tape it. So take your time and learn how to do these because these are great learning tools. It's kind of like a puzzle, but they go together. And so um, she tells you in the instructions how to put them together. Her instructions are really good, guys. Really, really good. So um, when you go to buy that, you're going to get probably about 15, 20 pages of instructions. It's really, really spot on. Pictures, the whole bit. She's really good at them. I've used her patterns before, so I wasn't worried about the instructions. I knew they were going to be good. And then also on this, here is where you're going to find your elastic measurement chart. A lot of times they'll put it in the instructions, and I was looking through the instructions and I don't think I saw it. Maybe she didn't have it in there, but then I found it here. So this was kind of a different spot, but just be aware. It's there if you're looking for it. Hey, Anna, Anna, happy, happy birthday, girl. I just told everybody it was your birthday. So happy birthday. Thank you for taking time out on your birthday to come be with us. That is so sweet. Hey, Leslie. Stacy. Who else came in? Anybody? Oh, Zoe. Z. Sorry. <laughs> I've got to remember that. I'm so used to using your whole name. i got to remember Z. Anybody else I miss? Yeah, that was fun yesterday, Z. Man, that was a good time. You guys, wow. Everybody stepping up and doing all that. That was really fun to watch. That was good. You guys are amazing. Um, when the lines are so close, well, what I do is I'll cut the pattern pieces out first, Sandra. And if you have to go and take a pencil or something and actually draw the line so you know where you're going first, that's just, you, you just got to practice it. They're all color coded. So you can tell by the color. Here's your size key. Here's your size key. And if you print this out in color and print your pattern pieces in color, then it's going to um, it's going to coordinate with what you have here. And your guys are going to be fine. You just have to say, OK, so for the 14, it's the solid red line I'm cutting on for the um, four. It's the dotted green line. For the 12 month, it's the dotted red line. So you just have to stop and just kind of study it and read it. But you also know that sizes work from small to large too. So that kind of helps you. And they don't have any colors that are too close together next to each other. And then she also takes the dashes and varies the size of those two from one size to the next. So it, it's not as bad as it as you think it's going to be. So there's going to be some long dashes and there's going to be a long dash, short dash, long dash. And then there's going to be a series of dots and then the next one's going to be a series of dashes again. So it's not too hard to see what's going on. But yeah, if you're having a hard time with it, just take a pencil or a pen and draw over the one that you are going after so that you see it ahead of time and then just go cut it out. So um, the piece that I was going to tell you guys about is this below knee front. Don't worry about all of this that's going on right here. This is for pocket placement, okay? So don't worry about that. That's pocket placement. All right, guys. So I've cut mine out. And the only thing you're going to want to make sure you keep track of is your back and your front. So I usually kind of just attach one of them. So I'm just going to attach my back to the pieces and I'll know the one that's not attached is my front. And I just kind of got to keep, keep that that way until I get everything sewn together. And the only thing that matters is the um the crotch area when you're sewing because in it's shorter on the back than it is on the front and i know that seems weird but it is that's normal for pants your front it goes back further and then the back 
doesn't go quite as far. Joanne, you'll be okay. I think um, just put the puzzle together first. Don't just look at it all and just let it overwhelm you. So print out the pieces, sit down and put them together, just like you're putting a jigsaw puzzle together because that the box of the jigsaws puzzle pieces can really overwhelm you. Then sit and read the pattern once you've got everything put together and you can look at what they're telling you and look at the pieces that you've got there. And then you can slowly start deciphering what's going on. So I think once you start just kind of kicking away at it, you're going to be fine. It's that first, oh my gosh, 28 pages? No, no. It's probably good that it's 28 pages because there's probably some really good um, instructions in there too. I can't remember. That's why I'm saying that. I don't remember. I did, Mary. Oh my gosh. you are. I know. The minute you started doing that, I was like, and she's ahead of the game. That's great. Yep. Just as Angela says, you'll be you'll be fine. It, the first time you do it is um, is tough. It, it not tough, but it's tough to get past that. Oh my gosh, how much you know? But one little piece at a time. Just take it a little bit at a time. You know, and that's where a lot of sewing is. Is we let the everything kind of get in our head and then we're like oh wow that's a lot when it's really not you just got to take it apart you know remember when we we're going to school and we had all this homework well kind of the same thing you know we kind of had to just sit down and figure it out and take it a little bit at a time so you'll be okay oh yeah yeah mary they were good and i love that combination that you did that was so cute so 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 cute all right, so it doesn't really matter where we start, guys. Um, since I'm not putting a pocket on, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew the waistband like they said. Let me see if I can do that. Yep, that'll be right. Yep. Okay, so I'm sewing the waistband. We sew each side first. And you can do this with a sewing machine. You don't have to have a serger. And if you're using a serger, you will need a sewing machine to hem these. Yep, there you go, Angela. That's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay, so then... I've sewn the sides together. So we now have a circle. And remember, use your iron, guys. This is one of those where you've got to iron after you sew things. And I'll show you where. Or it's going to be a little tough to get it to line up quite right. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and just iron these open because I'm doing this out of um, camo. So it's a twill. And I want it to be nice and crisp. In fact, it's a lightweight cotton twill. About the weight of, a, you know, just a regular cotton fabric. All right. So then we fold this in half. And I'm going to go ahead and just clip this so it doesn't move on me. Because we have to sew in two different spots on this. At least I think that's what they're saying. And I may just take and do just one. Yeah, okay. I'm going to, since this is cotton, you'll need the sewing machine for this part too. I'm trying to think. Do I want to do that? When you're doing it out of the microfiber, you can or don't have to do this step. I don't know. It's just a it's just a finish is what it really is. It's not like it's holding the short together. It just makes it look closer to um, 
an actual one you buy in the store. So I'm going to go ahead and just press this just because it's the, the cotton, but I'm going to press it so it's in half. If you're using knit, you won't have to do this. The microfiber, you might want to, just makes it easier to deal with. Okay, so the step that I've been talking about is she wants us to just sew a straight stitch. This is the folded part up here. And this is my open where I folded it in half, okay? She wants us to do a straight stitch at the top here all the way around. And that's a finished stitch. It just looks really nice when it's done. And then we will take another one an inch down from that and create the casing for your elastic. Now, you don't have to do this top one is what I'm saying. Just make sure we do the bottom one and it's an inch and then you leave about, oh, about an inch or so for your elastic to go in like we've been doing on the previous um, uh, ones of the bummies where I did the uh, ruffle butt bummies and we put the elastic in. Um, we want to make sure we can have that open to thread those in. And you can do that, Sandra. You absolutely can. I, I do that a lot of times, too. So, um, yeah. Yeah. No, do that. <laughs> I missed the conversation about the quilt. Sorry, I was talking. So um, I think I am going to go ahead and just finish it. I'm going to do it like the pattern says, and we'll see what it looks like. I know it's going to look awesome because I know, you know, it's that top stitch that we have when you buy the shorts. So I am going to go over here and do it real quick on my sewing machine. I'll be right back. You guys chat, sing Anna happy birthday. Okay, so got the first part done. Mia, you'll be proud of me. I wasn't searching for my uh, scissors. <laughs> All right, so this is what I'm talking about, where they want one at the top, and then we're going to measure from that stitch line down an inch. Now, I'm using three-quarter inch elastic. So I'm going to have a little bit of play in there and I'm okay with that because she had an inch elastic going into an inch casing. And I was kind of curious how she got that to go in very easily. I usually like to have just a little bit of play. So I usually recommend about an eighth to a quarter of an inch play, but then if you're an eighth of an inch and you're having a hard time sewing straight, you could end up losing your, your play factor. So just realize you can use three quarter inch. You don't have to use one inch. That's what I had. If you do have one inch, you want to use one inch. I'd probably go down about an inch and a quarter. I think we've got room to do that. Let me see. Mm, 
Come in close. I would stay at the one inch and use three quarter inch um, elastic. So yeah, actually you're not gonna have a whole lot of room there. All right, so I'm gonna go back and sew my one inch down and then leave an opening and I'll show you guys what that looks like. All right. All right, so we have our casing. And then I left that much of an opening so that I can get in there with my elastic and thread it through. And then we'll go back and close it up. So I just gotta trim my thread off. And I really like how she put this on because it's super easy. We're going to put it on very much like we do the bummies where we're going to stretch it once we've got the elastic in. So I have never done it this way. And I was like, that's kind of cool. Let's see how this goes. Oh, that's okay, Shana. True. True, Mary. Yeah, if they let you. <laughs> Did you find out if he was going to let you do those shorts? That pattern I showed you. So, yeah, this, this feeds in real nice, guys, with the three-quarter inch elastic and the one-inch casing, sewn casing. So, Yeah, I know, Mary. I'm not either. Sometimes I cheat and don't make it actual bias tape. I just make it strips. You didn't hear me say that. <laughs> I just, you know, by making bias tape eats up so much fabric that I'm just like, oh, okay, I'm getting stuck right at a seam. Oh, come on. Go through there. Why are you not going through? There. Okay. Okay, and this one, I didn't need to um, pin the end like I showed you how to do on those ruffle bums that we did a couple weeks ago. This one is long enough that I was able to scrunch it up real tight and then I'll lengthen it out once I'm done. Okay, so now all I gotta do is run over. Don't twist your elastic when you do this that run over and sew the ends together. So what I do is I overlap about 
three quarters of an inch or so. And then I will take it over to my sewing machine and I sew a box so that it's definitely going to stay. I'll be right back. Okay, so if you weren't quite sure what I was talking about, that's what I did. And it doesn't matter what color. That was the color that matched my fabric. And it actually worked out really good so I could see what I was doing. All right, so then now I'm just going to work it back in. And then I'm going to go over and close it up real quick. So close up the area that I left open. You can put off to the side for right now. Hey, Juana. Hey, Linda. Let me sure I caught everybody. Did I miss anybody else? Hope not. Diane, there you are. Okay, I did miss you. Sorry. Just checking to see if anybody's trying to get a hold of me here. Just one second. Okay, we're good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is you're going to take your back or your front, doesn't matter because we got to do it to both sides. So, depending upon how you cut your fabric out, because I just folded it in half and then cut the two pieces at one time. You want to put right sides together. And I did mine with the right sides out. No big deal. I just have to pull it and turn it real quick. And line it up real good. And if you need to pin, or if you're using microfiber, the polyester microfiber like we were talking about earlier, pin, please pin. I would be pinning like crazy if I had the microfiber. So I'm going to sew or serge this edge. Okay. This one's over here. So I'm going to do this one. Okay. On both of them. And I'm going to remember this is the back pieces because I'm going to place my red clip just on one of the pieces there. And I'm going to always carry that with me on my back piece so that I know until I get it completely to where I don't have to remember that's the back anymore. And I always have to do that no matter when I'm making pants, when I make my linen pants, I always have to make sure I mark which is which because invariably I'll just get going, not pay attention, and I'll screw it up. All right, so got the back, 
and we got the front. Okay, now I'm going to go press these flat on both. And all you're doing is pressing the seam to one side, doesn't matter which side, just press the seam. So they're both like that, okay? So now, to me, I always have to look at the pattern every time I do this, and I've done this a bajillion times, and I still don't trust myself to remember that I'm doing this the right way. Did I do that right? <laughs> Backing up and looking at the pattern. She's got such good instructions, guys. Oh, you know what? I did screw it up. I knew I was going to do that. Okay. Got to put the front and the back together. Not a big deal. Because when I went to put those together, I was like, yep, I didn't do that. See, this is what I'm saying. you got to watch the patterns because even those of us that do it all the time, screw it up. So the easiest way when you're surging, and I've learned a long time ago, this is the easiest way to undo surging. See what you guys are watching. Okay. I'm move this so you guys can see. And that's why that's why this is live. You guys see us screw up just like everybody else. I'm going to take and cut just the teeniest part of this off. And all it's doing is taking my top loops off of my serger. I mean, I, you can't even see how much I took because it just it's just that much, that little. And I'm just going to make sure I got them all. I should have. I'm going to cut these off. That easy, guys. So don't spend hours and hours and hours trying to pick out a surge seam if you screwed up. It should come apart just like that. And you really don't even have to pick this one off because we're just going to sew them back together. So, okay. You guys know I'm really good at messing things up. So you see I'm not perfect. All right, but I want to keep those together. So that is that's my back. So I took my thing off, that's my back. And now I'm going to put one clip on each one so that I remember that's my back. I am not perfect, Cindy. I screw up pretty much every single live. I've got something I screw up and I have to show you guys how to fix it. So if nothing else, I'm showing you guys how um, <laughs> how imperfect I am. So cut your ends off. And I mean, I'm, I'm just taking this top loop off. So that's why I'm saying when you guys go and whisk this off, you're not even taking enough off to make it matter on sizing. You're just taking a micro, micro amount. And this one, I didn't cut 100% straight. So I'm just going to. And if you want to cut it with scissors, you can, you know, if your piece is on, um, in fact, I'm going to do that because this one's not hundred percent straight. If your piece is on an angle, like a, a curve or something, it's probably just as easy to do it with scissors. So you can see I'm just snipping the top edge, literally just the top edge. 
And if you guys just practice even on something, put two of them together and practice cutting it apart, you'll see if you're a little worried to try and do it on something that you've sewn. In fact, it's probably going to take me longer to cut this with a pair of scissors than it's going to take me to take it apart. You just got to find that one piece. There's one thread that pulls. The rest will, the rest will fight you. And there it goes. Just like that. use this to pull that off a little bit clean up my mess <laughs> yeah <laughs> nope never again I know I did it the long way once joanne and i was like okay i know there's got to be an easier way to this and i really kind of started thinking about it and i was like there's got there's really got to be one thread we can get a hold of and i finally just kept messing with it and pulling on it until i figured it out and it just zip and i was like yep no more doing it the long way okay so, start over. Rewind everything I just said. Sorry, I'm just, this bothers me that it's there and then it'll come off. All right. And don't cut your fingernail like I did with your it's your rotary blade. Thanks. Thankfully, it's just my uh, polish, so you'll be all right. But okay, front to back, front to back, on the sides. So how you're gonna know? You got front to back, front to back. One's gonna be long. One's gonna be short. And I'm talking about here. Okay. So I'm going to iron this back flat because remember I ironed it earlier in one direction. So, yeah, if you have to rip, make sure you always go back and re-iron it so it's flat. And then I'm going to zip those sides together. Make sure you put them the right direction so that you've got your two curves at the top. Don't get in a hurry and do it like this, you know, so that you end up being long. So, pants are easy, but you really have to pay attention to what you're doing, as you saw. <laughs> So don't try and do it in a hurry. That's when I always screw up. All right, there we go. Now I'm gonna iron them. So you can see I've got my clip. Let me put this back up. So I've got my clip here. And I've got my clip here. So this is my back, and this is my back. And I'm ironing my seam on one side. 
All right, so now we are going to put right sides together. I'm going to be picking some of this stuff out. This is crazy. We'll get that later. This is such a help, though, to get all this stuff off. Maybe your little threads. All right. So what we're doing is we're matching. We're going to do the crotch area now. So you got your short side and your long side. Okay. So we're going to put those together and sew those. I know I did it right because I've got my two clips here and no clips here. And these all match up the way they're supposed to. Okay, so now we're going to open this up. See how we're starting to look like a pair of shorts? Iron again, guys. This is the hardest part. If you don't iron this part, going back after you're done is so hard. So if you do it right now, it's still not easy, but it's much easier. And you definitely want to get at least a good pressing once. And you just kind of have to work your way up that curve. It's not easy to just do in one swoop. I usually end up moving the fabric several times. Now, last part we're going to do before we put the waistband on is you go and you match. So I've pulled it like this, and you've got your two crotch seams down here. We're going to match together. So you want those two seams right there to be right on top of each other. And so you definitely want to pin these. And I'll be pinning these probably a couple of times with a couple of pins so that they do not move. They're going to move a little. It just is inevitable. It's going to shift just a tiny bit. And that's okay. You just don't want them to be, you know, terribly off or the pants won't fit quite as well as they should. And then I usually put another pin down at the bottom to match up my bottom. On each side. Notice I still have the clips in, guys. I haven't taken those out yet. There's a reason. And then I'll grab one in the middle, too. I always have pinned my legs. It's just such a lot of straight line sewing and I'm afraid that it's going to walk on me just enough that it's gonna cause a problem. So I always pin and then that way I know I've got a really good chance that it's all gonna stay where it's supposed to.
Yeah, and that's what I used to do, Mary, before I had a serger. And I made the linen pants by the dozens that way. And I was, oh, man. It probably took me three hours to make those pants because of that. And especially if I was doing like a size 8 or a 10, you know, it's like those leg seams from one end all the way up to another. I swear they were like this. And it was nuts. And it would take me forever. When I got a serger, 45 minutes. Cut, sewn, done. Three hours without. I was just amazed. And it was these long seams that was taking forever. Because I'd have to make like you were doing a pass. I'd have to, I'd sew them. And then I'd go back and finish the edge real nice. Okay, now here's one little thing that, that you will probably never see in a pattern that will tell you to do this. But it makes a whole lot of sense, and I do this on all of my pants, shorts, anything. And I'll show you here in a second. Let me get these pulled out. I'm going to go over to my sewing machine. And if you're doing with a sewing machine, you still do this, okay? This isn't because I did this on a serger. This is a double seam. So I want to run a straight stitch, another seam on top of the seam I already sewed. I want to run it. Sorry, guys. I don't know. My, my internet just kind of blipped in and out. I think we're having storms. So am I, am I back on? Can you tell me? Somebody give me a thumbs up or something. Am I back? Okay, good. Yeah, because it kept telling me that I was unstable. And I've never had that happen, but I'm looking outside and I'm seeing the storm roll in. So bear with me. That's one thing about living rural. Sometimes storms can interfere with my internet. Okay. So let me tell you one more time what I was telling you. I'm going to go back to my sewing machine and this doesn't matter if you've surged or sewn. doesn't matter. I'm, I'm a little fuzzy. Maybe that's good. <laughs> Maybe it's good that I'm fuzzy. Um, so I'm going to run right back across that crotch area so you know when you're like you've ever you've ever had your pants split out on you trying to prevent that from happening so it's going to be you know however far past this seam and this seam you feel like you want to go but it's a reinforcing stitch is all it is and you're not going to usually see that on um patterns and that you really should do it though because it's a professional thing and it's the way I was taught how to sew when I was really small, and it was done a lot at that time. And I don't think that they do it anymore, but I do it all the time, especially on my linen pants. I do it because, you know, kids, they're constantly walking with their legs apart. You don't need that part to burst it open at the wrong time, whether it's during a wedding or when they're swimming or what. So I'm going to quick like go do that. And that's that's just a little tip that if you've watched this video, you'll know about. Otherwise, others won't know. You never know. Might be a quiz someday on that with a giveaway. Okay, so you probably really can't see it that well, but it's right. It's from here to here. And I just used the color that matched my uh, fabric. You can, since I did this in white, you could grab a white and put it on there if you want to change your thread out or whatever. It really doesn't matter. Because it's still not really going to show. Even if I hold this up, you wouldn't be able to see it against that white. 
All right. So now I can take my clips out because my back is higher than my front. And so I already know that. And then I also can see that my long area for the back is where it's supposed to be back here and it pulls the short area up. So I don't need my clips anymore. Got me through that. I'm going to cut my stragglers here because we're going to also hem these. So I'll catch those in. I don't have to, you know, cut them completely off, but I can shorten them up a little bit. Yes. And Angela, I just tend to, I look and see what they say for the seam allowances. If they say five eighths, then I take a little bit of it either off when I'm cutting and I don't make it five eighths or I take it off when I'm surging. But if I miss it, it's a little healthier size, not by much, but it's enough sometimes. So just, yeah, just need, just need to pay attention to that stuff. Sometimes it's not a bad thing. If your patterns run a little big, it's all right. Kid will grow into it. It's better than them running small. Okay. So while this is, this is where um, I'm going to want to hem this. I think I'm going to do that first. So we're going to turn an inch hem up. I'm going to surge around and then just flip it up and go sew it. But I want to finish this off so that it doesn't fray. And if you want to turn rather than um, turn just a little bit of it up and then flip it, you can do that. So you would like turn a quarter of an inch and then go up three quarters more of an inch. And it'll turn that inside as well if you don't want to do stitching. Or you can zigzag on your sewing machine. And, you know, if you really wanted to just surge the bottom, I'm going to show what that looks like. That could be a cool finish. And you wouldn't have to turn a hem if you didn't want to. Just saying. It's another little add, another little difference to these patterns that you can do. All right. Yeah, um, my serger already has just a certain amount it cuts, Sandra. So um, I can't really adjust that I probably could just a little bit I never have I've just left it and I adjust accordingly if need be but look you could easily just leave it surged at the bottom for a different look too if you don't want to take it and turn it and if you wanted to do that it would just be a little bit longer so it'll be an inch longer further down the knee some some of these kids you know love it longer on the legs or maybe your child's really really tall and they need that little tiny extra to make it below the knee or right at the knee or whatever but yeah 
and it might even fray just a little bit too over time and that could leave a kind of a cool little finish as well so all right let me look at something here Okay, so anyway, I'm going to turn it back inside out. You can um, you can do this last if you want and put the waistband on next. It really doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just turn this up and iron it because when we go to put the waistband on, it's going to be turned inside out and we're going to do it like we did with bummies. Yeah, no kidding, Leslie. Look, getting a little tired of the rain, but remind me of that in July when I'm crying for rain. <laughs> I usually iron mine before I go sew. So I'll make sure that they're the inch. Now, if you guys have never seen one of these, these things are invaluable. It's a measuring gauge. And I love these for when I try and turn a hem or something. But you can get them and these slide. So you set it to wherever you want it. I want it to be at an inch. So I'm gonna set it to an inch. And then I'm gonna go measure So this part down here sits right at the bottom and then I measure up to the edge. If you guys can see that very well. And then you can place a pin accordingly. All right, I'll show you guys real quick. I'm gonna move the camera. So you can see how that works and then I'll place a pin and then I'll come over here and measure and if it's not right then I'll adjust it and it just helps me place everything so easily these things are awesome and they make your work so effortless sorry guys So I will pin it just in a few spots and then I will run over. I'll iron it too. That way I know it's solid. And a lot of times it's where your two, your seams are coming together like this one that it kind of wants to shift just a little bit. So I definitely want to have a pin there because it's just the bulk of the seams that makes it want to do that. And after you guys have used these a few times, this is where you get really good at eyeballing half inch, inch, three quarters of an inch, and then you're going to be really close.
And I also got to make sure my seams lay the same direction, top and bottom. And I thought of you when I picked up this print. Okay, so I ironed them so they're nice and crisp. And I'm just going to go over and real quick, like, run my seam around. Yep, you, Shana. <laughs> Mary, did you hear that Janome purring over there in the background? Okay, just cutting my thread. So now we turn it inside out. Mary, you would love it. I thought yours were combos, weren't they? All right, so it's nice and hemmed. It's got that nice wide hem that the board shorts always have. So now I'm just gonna put the waistband on. And that I can do with my serger. So we're going to do this like we did with the, um, the bunnies. So your raw edge that you have here is facing up. Just like we did with the bunnies. And you're going to take, place it on the outside. So I'm going to line up my seam with both, so my side seam and my short, and the seam on the waistband. Grab a clip. Then I'm gonna go to the other side, same thing. Side seam of your short to the seam of your waistband. Hey, Sam. And then match up your raw edges. And then I'm going to take, and you can do this ahead of time too. I use, I usually just get ahead of myself and then I do it later. 
Then I'll take and put these two together and find the center of my waist. And then I'll clip where that's at on both sides. I haven't clipped it to the short yet. I'm just clipping where. Like I said, you can do this one before you even put it on if you want to put all four of them on, if that's easier for you. I always just get ahead of myself and just get going. All right, then you take the back seam, match it up to where you just put that clip in the middle of the back and clip it. Make sure all your fabric is laying nice and flat and do the same thing to the front. And I'll show you here in a second what it looks like. It's going to get cut off when I surge anyway, but it's messing with me. Okay. This one too, so you guys can see what's going on. All right, so I've clipped the two sides here and then the two front. Okay. So you can see raw edge to raw edge, okay? So if I were to flip it up, then you'll see the waistband the right way. So when we go to the serger, just like the bummies, you start surging and we're gonna stretch this waistband and lay, so it lays flat while we're sewing. And then you get to the next one, you take that off, move your hands, stretch, and then do that all the way around, okay? So I'm gonna go put this waistband on and I'll let you guys Bring it with me so you can watch what I'm doing. Too many cords, guys. Too many cords. So the first one, I'm going to just take the clip out, hang on to it, make sure everything's lining up good, put it underneath, and we're just going to get started. So I don't really pull a lot on, I guess I'm going to on this one. When I start the bummies, I don't usually, I try and just get started, but this one, it's not as much pull to line it all up. So. Just the waistband small because I'm doing the size 12 months, so I got to move it a lot. You can see how I'm pulling it, and then I'll sew. Move it, pull it, remove the clip. Except you guys can't see what I'm doing. And I'll get you closer. Hang on. So you can see how I'm pulling There's the clip. I'm going to remove that clip and then we're going to sew on further. Okay. you guys stop and go to move things, make sure your needle is in the down position so that you don't pull it out from underneath. But I always just double check everything's caught on the bottom side. Looks like we're good. So. Turn your 
turn it inside out. Take it over and press it. Cut off any straight ends we have here. Got some serger threads that did not get cut off. So I'm safe to cut those now because everything's caught. back up here and get a final look at these. Alright guys, here's your board shorts. It's definitely getting darker out just all of a sudden I've noticed. Sorry, got to work on that lighting when it's going to do that. So, oh, here's your board short. And this is where you can go now and iron it really nice and flat again because you've already ironed all your seams. So to go over and take it and just give it a final press, I would just flatten all those seams in half. Your iron so that everything just lays really nice now so and see how easy those would be just to zip up a bunch of swim trunks for either boys or girls and put a cute little shirt with it um, they can have you know a tank or a t-shirt or something oh uh, thanks Angela Yeah, no kidding. It is, Mary. Yep, yeah, I've got to got to figure that. I was going to look at Prism and see. I just didn't have time today to deal with it. So I'm like, yep, that's on on the agenda. So yeah, but you know, you can see how I, since I ironed them completely flat and I just fold them in half, how nice. And that's the difference of ironing as you go, guys. Otherwise, you'll be over there right now trying to make this iron up super nice. And it, you'll get there, but it's just going to take you a whole lot longer. So anyway, but yeah. Cute little guy with his big old diaper bum in this. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> so Shana, this is why I thought of you was the camo. Yeah, Leslie, you, you're going to have fun with these. The different, the things you can do. And then couldn't you see like the little pockets on the side that they've got in there too? That would be so cute. You could do just one side. You can do both sides. You know, there's so many things. You could embroider something on the pocket and then put it on. And, you know, anything. Or you can take like this pattern piece here, embroider something right there before you even sew it all together. You know, there's just so many things you guys can do with these. So have fun with these simple patterns, guys, because that's what all the stuff that everybody gravitates to. It's those real simple patterns that you take and you add your own flair to. Yeah, no kidding, Mary. Swim diaper, please. <laughs> yeah, isn't that the truth? <laughs>
It's camouflage, yes, Shana. And this is actually a really nice camo too. The print is really, really nice. Yes, they do, Mary. Yeah, I used to have a pool back home in uh, Nebraska and my little nephew would come over and we had the swim diapers and I swear those still got, <laughs> there was no way of stopping it. I made 12 months and they seem, it seems big, but I know board shorts are supposed to be big to begin with. So a 12 month, they might be able to get 18 because they've got diaper. So that's, that's why it looks so big to me. And depending upon how short or tall the kid is, this might be pants, <laughs> you, know? you never know. So you'll just, uh, your mileage will vary on that small of a size until they kind of catch up. So you just never know. <laughs> so yeah, if you, if you know somebody specific that you're, you're uh, making these for, it may not hurt to get a measurement, find out where that knee's at, or it might be really cute if this goes down practically to their ankles. You know, some of those little kids are so stinking cute and they're wearing these that are kind of big pants. Well, at least you guys got to see. I mess up on the regular. So glad you guys can laugh at that with me. It's very common. So don't be hard on yourself, guys. Doesn't matter how long you've sewn, you still mess up. And I just I'm just real good at it. So <laughs> did Anna leave? She probably had birthday plans. Oh, thanks, Joanne. Yeah, I had, I'm human. I'll admit it. <laughs> I am so far from perfect. Yeah, I know. Isn't that the way it goes, Mary? Yeah, always. Man, I'm just looking at these. I'm thinking of all kinds of stuff now that I'm telling you guys these things. But okay, so you see how that little finish, remember I was telling you about that stitch up here, how it's just a finish, really, that's all it is. So you guys don't have to do it if you feel like you don't want to. It just, gave, it just gives it a nice little way to lay flat. Oh, thanks, Stacy. And you will see the bottom, that casing. You will see that, that stitch. So if that bothers you, you can always go back and take a little deeper with your sewing machine and hide it. So you do a double if, you're, if you do it once and you realize I don't want that to show, you can easily, and I might do that because it kind of bothers me because I didn't get it completely straight. I'm just one of those. So I may go back and just pull that up so that it, it hides it all the way around. Yeah, Sam, you'll get to see me screw up right away. Right away, Sam. <laughs> so make sure you watch before you do things, okay? <laughs> Otherwise, you get to screw up with me, and then I show you how to fix it. Yeah, Mary, you got to find the thread that your machine likes. And each machine, I, my machine could like one, and you could have the exact same machine, and it wouldn't like it. So it, I think it's just... Probably days of the week they're made on. Who knows? You know, you always hear don't buy a car that was made on a Monday and a Friday. Well, how do you know? I mean, it's just kind of a running joke. But, yeah. You are welcome. I hope everybody had fun tonight. It was a quick one tonight. 
But it, I left out, you know, the pockets and everything because I want you guys to uh, be comfortable with doing the pockets before you do them. They're easy. They're so, so, so easy. And they go on before you even sew anything together. So, you know, you sew your seam, the seam down, and then you open it up and you put the pocket on then. So everything's laying flat. So it's really, really super easy to put those pockets on. So don't let that intimidate you. Just go ahead if you want pocket and do it. Just take your time and you'll figure it out and follow the instructions. The instructions are really, really good. Oh, that's okay, Nero. Yeah, so funny, Mary. That is so true, though. <laughs> yeah, I got to remember, what do I have for the next one or two? Let me see what, um, I think Amber's tomorrow night. Let me look. I think I know. I think I remember what it was. Yes, tomorrow night she's doing the apron. So the baby apron, the little apron that she does. That's hers tomorrow night. And then in two weeks, I'm going to shake it up. And we're going to make an animal-shaped pillow. So you can put that either on your kid's bed or let them play with it or whatever. So that'll be kind of our first step into things for the home. So, yeah, we, we'll be touching into things like that every now and then. And I do remember somebody saying that they wanted to do um, hot pads and things like that as well. So I'm going to I'm going to slip those in here and there. We'll get you get you little things that you can do for decorations, too. Um, I've got a lot of ideas of things for the home that you can definitely um, use in kids room anywhere. So. Oh, no, Shana. I've heard of that happening. It's kind of hard on washing machines. <laughs> Maybe you don't want pockets on these. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> yeah, rocks. Rocks are, are definitely um, tough. Sorry. I was looking at my white thread from my surgery that I couldn't get completely snipped out of there. Drives me crazy. So that's another reason why I want to go back in and take one more run of a seam. I want to hide all those little serger area, thread areas that I couldn't completely snip away. So yeah, this is, um, and I know we're going to go back and redo some of the things that we started at the beginning, but that will probably be a ways yet. We're still trying to give some new things so that when we do go back and start redoing a few things, there might be a new twist to it that we have thought of, or it'll be just long enough that if I did it, she'll do it. And then you'll see her way of doing it and vice versa. So yeah, we're going to constantly be shaking it up. So, But man, I can't believe seems like we just sat down and figured this out and I've only got two more left. We've only after tonight, I've just got two more and then her and I've got to sit down and think again for the next three months. And we did three months guys. I can't believe we're there already. Oh my goodness. A Barbie head there. <laughs> Well, that's not something I would be expecting to see, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, wow, a Barbie head. <laughs> so did everybody get to see... Um, Aqualaboom Batik yesterday on her live. That was fun. Talked about it earlier. That was a lot of fun. So those of you that have come in a little later, if you choose to do, if you want to try these just as regular shorts, and then you want to go back and do swim shorts, 
which is definitely what this pattern is great for too. Um, you would want a micro, a polyester microfiber, or they call it a board short fabric. I can't find any here, but I can order it online. Now, some of you guys might be able to get it in your Joann's. Our Joann's is really starting to cater more towards all the baby goods. And so it's getting harder and harder and harder to find just regular clothing fabric anymore in there. I had, I was actually, I did find swimsuit material, but it was for women. So it was the stretchy stuff. And I couldn't believe I found like about 15 bolts of it. I was shocked that they were carrying that much. Um, and then they've got cosplay, a whole entire area of cosplay stuff. And then within that is like the wedding fabric as well. So we're getting kind of hard to find. So if you guys can't find that at your store, just go online and look for it. So either put in polyester microfiber. So polyester and then microfiber is one word. And, and then also try board short fabric. I couldn't find anything when I did that, but I did a real fast search. I didn't look too hard. Um, I didn't expect to find a lot, but I thought, you never know, it might just pop up a bunch and it didn't. Um, if you do use that, like I was telling you guys, go back and rewatch. I was talking about how to cut it at the very beginning. And there is a little bit of um, a trick to it. It's not going to be tough. It's a little fussy and a little slick like the minky. So just go and watch and I tell you how to pin it and how to cut it and definitely use a rotary cutter. Don't use scissors, use a rotary cutter. The scissors, you will be chasing your fabric across the table, no matter how much you pin it. And it's just going to be that type of a fabric. And you're going to end up feeling like you're hacking at it. So you want to use this. So, or if you could think of, you know, some another fabric, you know, that you would like for swimsuit too, you know, that's up to you. But that's at the beginning of the video. Oh, definitely. Yes, Angela. Z's been doing really good. So she's definitely got some trip, trip, trips tricks and tips on that one she can help you with for sure hey wendy you've got a serger okay so yeah the inner crotch seams i sometimes end up doing them twice okay so i slow way down and if you're going one direction and you find it hard to make the curve try and start the other way for me it's almost easier to start right where the curve is the most and go, some people, they like to have that long run at it and then they'll hit the curve and you just take it real slow. But I also tend to open up my curve and try and lay it flat. And that works really well too. So if you get to the point where you start getting to your curve, then just take it and pull it and kind of pull it back so that you can kind of try and keep that in a straight line as much as possible. It's not gonna be a hundred percent all the way and then all of a sudden it's going to become too much of a curve so then you just kind of go at it the best you can and then if it's still not real good you go back and re resurge again and catch it and go from the other direction if you need to or something there just isn't a trick to it you've just got to do it over and over and over and figure out what works for you on that it's uh it is definitely not easy you can do it though. You will get it. You just may have to hit it a few times and it'll be fine. It's not a big deal. Yeah, you're gonna be so glad you got it. What kind did you get, Wendy? Did you get the brother or a different brand? Are you talking to me, Angela? Oh, are you? Oh, I'm, I'm missing who's talking to who here for a second. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. You're talking to Z. Okay. Yeah, Z, um, do you want her to message you on Instagram? Angela, message you on Instagram? Okay, cool, Wendy. Yeah. Ever, there's a lot of people on here that have the brother. So I was just curious so that if you are ever having issues 
we can kind of help direct you to who's got the same machine and kind of help you figure it out. Okay, Angela, um, message Z on Instagram. If you follow her on Instagram, then you just go send her a message there and you guys can chat there. And there's actually now, guys, um, I believe there's now video chat on Instagram as well. Let me go look real quick. I think that came about not too long ago. Yeah, there's chat rooms and there's video chat. And you can also um, just voice talk too. So, yep. So whatever works for people, you know, when Instagram's just as easy to use now as, you know, Facebook and everything to get a hold of people since they've given us that new way to talk. So it, it makes it so much easier. And if we're already following each other on Instagram, then it's so easy to just click like flip over there and message somebody. So, yeah. But those of you that came in late and if you know Anna, go wish her a happy birthday. Um, it's her birthday today and she was on here earlier. I don't think she's probably still on here. I haven't seen her lately. I was just kind of excited that she uh, was even on. Oh, good night, Shana. Night. Aqua Bloom Boutique. Yes, Angela. Mm -hmm. Aqua Bloom Boutique. And I think, Angela, you're, if you're following me, you can go into my followers and find her if you're having a hard time finding her. If for some reason you're not able to. So. Anna's having a good time. She's giving away all kinds of stuff today for her birthday. So she gave another one, too. Oh, Delphi, hey. That's okay, Angela. Yep, it's all good. You know, it won't take you long to figure everything out. Yeah, the very first time you go do stuff, it, it feels a little awkward, but pretty soon you'll just be flipping through it real quick. Hey, Michelle. Oh, yes, a red crayon in the laundry. Let's hope you got it before it hit the dryer. Uh, Dolphy, we just finished, but you can go back and rewatch. Yeah, it was a, it was a fast one tonight. But we did the little board shorts. And these can be either boys or girls. But mine I did in camo. And you can also do them for swim shorts if you use the right fabric. Thanks, Dolphy. Um, I've been on YouTube doing videos, Joanne. I've been, I just started doing them. I believe it was end of December, beginning of January, something like that. So I've been doing that for about right at about six months right now. Wow. <laughs> Hasn't been that long already. Um, Etsy, I was, um, I've been on Etsy a very long time. There was a long break I took though where I didn't really have my shop open because I had to go back to work full time and I was dealing with that and I just recently picked it back up again within the last two years but I've been on Etsy since seven I want to say I can tell you here in a sec Oh, wait. It's not, Sarah. It's not thick. It's it's a really lightweight twill. It's super lightweight. It's just a touch heavier than quilting cotton, or it is the same weight as a nice, heavier quilting cotton. But no, it's super lightweight. I mean, there's really, it's the, it's probably the print. And the fact that it's such a crisp fabric that makes it look heavy.
that it's not, it's, I wish I could get this stuff more often because I love this twill. It's a beautiful twill. They don't, it's hard to find. And I got very lucky to find it at Joanne's, but you can kind of see how nice of a finish it has to it. It's just really well made. So yeah, no, it's, it's very, very lightweight. Here's the thickness of the, uh, the seam. Oh, thanks. I, um, Z uh, Z, I haven't put that up yet. Um, yeah, I will be doing that this summer. Definitely. I will be doing that. I'm not 100% sure when yet I've got to get through the next couple of weeks of my day job, which is crazy, 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 crazy. And then after that, I think things are going to quiet down and I'll be able to just totally um, pick up on some of these tutorials that I wanted to do for you guys. It's a twill, Leslie. Yeah, it's it's a real lightweight twill. Super, super lightweight. I mean, it's. It's definitely got that twill um, weave to it, but it's so lightweight. It just is so weird. I love it. It's just, but it's so crisp. It's one of those that no matter how many times you wash it, it's going to keep that really nice hand to it and just always be a nice crisp looking fabric. Uh, Mary, it shouldn't be too bad. No, uh, you can find a lot of patterns out there for that. I think I saw some freebies. Go look for them. It's going to be no different than that knit dress that I did way back, oh, probably three, four months ago. So you've got all of this is going to be the exact same sewing it knit wise. And then you're just going to add like the panty to it. And so you'll do the panty like we did on the sunsuit or the knit romper. So yeah, that's uh, that's putting those two together. You should be able to do it with no problem. It's the fabric you choose. So make sure you use a nice fabric that's nice to swim in, but also nice for you to sew. So you'll, you'll find those. You've just got to really, when you feel it, think about, okay, is this going to be easy for me to sew, even though it's great for swim and vice versa. So make sure, as you know, that you don't see through it or you just cut double layer. If, if it's see-through and you really, really want to use it or the girls are really set on that fabric, but it's too thin, then you can just use a double layer fabric and just get a white knit to put as the lining. And then you just cut it to cut the two as one, sew the two as one. So yeah, oh wait, man, 13 years, 13 years. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, you can do it, Mary. I know you can do it because it'd be super simple. And I know I saw some freebies out there when I was searching for this short pattern. So just put in like girl swimsuit sewing pattern free and see what comes up. I know there's a lot of cute little bikinis out there too, and that would be fairly easy as well. And what you could even do is um, if you wanted, you could do like the bikini bottoms and then take that t-shirt tutorial that we did and do a real fun t-shirt to put over it. So it'd be like a t-shirt with the little swimsuit bottoms. And then they'd have a little more coverage too. Uh, if you're worried about sun and things, you could even make a long sleeve one if you're worried about the sun and you want them to have a little more coverage. Okay. And you might even be able to make it into a one piece if you can't find it, but that's that's getting into the mashup that I tend to do. So I'm not gonna walk you down that one right now. But I know that it, there's gotta be some out there. Any other questions, guys? It was a fast one tonight. Super easy because we're building on things you've already done. 
and kind of doing the exact same things again, just in a little different form. So hopefully it's making some sense to you when we're doing some of these things. Um, I like the kids' clothes, Joanne. I've done a lot of adult clothes. In fact, I need to make myself just some simple um, knit shirts and things. So uh, I need to do that for me. But kids' clothes are just fun. They're just, you know, they're smaller. They're easier to hang on to and to deal with. And you can do a lot of fun things that you can't do with the adults, like ruffle everywhere, you know, and all kinds of cute prints. Um, that was my tutorial, Michelle. Yeah, the ruffle bottom diaper covers. So that was two tutorials ago. So I think, let me look, I can tell you. April, so the week after Easter, the Sunday after Easter is when we did that one. One, two, three. So about six weeks ago, give or take. April 11th, I think, is the date. But yeah, that would be a cute swimsuit bottom, Michelle, I agree. And you could definitely make those out of swimsuit material, do your own ruffles, do whatever, and then find a cute little top to go with it, make that. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely, Michelle. So I've got the t-shirt tutorial as well. And if you want to make it sleeveless, you could easily take that t-shirt pattern and just not put the sleeves in and then you just turn the hem. Just like, you know, this is, you just turn the hem and run the seam and then make the little ruffle bottoms to go with it. And that would be super cute. And you could even make, you know, the shirt as long or as short as you want it to be too. So that's the one thing about sewing those up you know, depending upon what you want to do, you could even take that t-shirt and make a swimsuit cover out of it for the little girls and just kind of take it and just flare it out just a touch on the side seams, just a little bit, you know, like an inch on each side so that it has like, this is a swing top, actually a dress, but I've got leggings with it. So you could do the same kind of thing with that top, that t-shirt and make a cute little cover up. Yep, that too. There's a lot of them there that you guys can take and just make all this summer wear out of for swimwear and everything. Just shake it up a little bit on fabric she use and maybe tweak this, that, or the other on there. Absolutely. Yeah, you guys got plenty of things now that we and me and Amber have done to get you guys through a whole summer wardrobe. Yeah, and I like how you're thinking out of the box. That's what I want you guys to do. I want you to look at these and see all the possibilities, not just the one thing that we're doing. All right, guys. Well, I think we're all kind of a little uh, quiet tonight. Oh, Angela. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I'll show you guys those. <laughs> those are those are kind of that might be the one thing I, I may not do. So sorry that that's kind of my claim to getting me going. And I, I designed the whole pattern. So I'm real hesitant to show much of that on camera.
Yeah, the ruching. Yeah, the ruching might be coming out, Michelle. I'm sorry, Angela. Yeah, that's that's the I've kind of protected those a little bit. I've had so many requests to sell the pattern and everything, and I just I can't do it yet. I just I can't. <laughs> hey, Mary Beth. That was a quiet night tonight, you guys. We've had a lot of lives. We're all chatted out today. That's good, though. That's good. That means that we're we're getting <coughs> our um, our time together. Sorry, I get a little tickle now. <coughs> Man, all this rain is creating all the mold and spores in the air down here that we get. And I'm so highly allergic to it that that's probably what's starting to kick in. So I'm looking out and I'm like, oh, yeah, look how damp it is out there. <laughs> Leslie knows exactly what I'm talking about. There's a special kind of humidity kind of thing that happens down here with mold. And it's just, oh, it gets me the minute it just starts going. So, and other people, then bother them. But that's the one thing that gets me. And then cedar trees get everybody else. And I've finally gotten used to those to the point where that doesn't bother me, but that mold will get me every time. Oh, we've already gone through that, Angela, down here. Yeah, everything's already bloomed. So we're actually further down the road, thankfully, for that, where the rest of the U.S. is just now starting to hit that. Oh, box pleats. Is that what you're talking about, Michelle? Box pleats are really cool. I love box pleats. I do those every now and then on um, some of my little girl tops. Oh, <laughs> Michelle. Yeah, I know. When we get um, the cedar down here. Our tree, our, our cars are all a funky color. And you always know, it's like, don't touch it. Just just get in the car and go. Don't touch it. <laughs> it's, oh, it'll get you. Yeah, the box pleats. Box pleats are fun. They are, um, they're not something you just sit down and do like that, though, because you've got to measure and then you've got to lay it over and pin it. And then you go to the next one and you measure and you lay it over and you pin it. And then you got to press it every now and then. So it's just, it's a little laborious, but they're gorgeous. If you get them in there right and you take the time to tack them down, because I even go in and I'll sew them down a certain direction, you know, a good inch or two, depending upon how big the pieces I'm making so that they stay. And that way, you know, you see it too. And it just, oh, it's so pretty. Yeah, maybe we'll do something with box pleats. And I'll show you guys how to do it. And it can be one of those where if you really want to know, you can tackle it. If not, you can just watch. Yes, absolutely, Mary. All right, Michelle, I mean, um, the only thing with box pleats is you got to make sure you account for that in the when you're cutting it out and that's where it gets a little tricky because the if your pattern is like this all of a sudden your pattern becomes like this because of all the fabric that it takes to pull pull it back in and so that's where if you're going to do box pleats you need to kind of practice a little bit and then once you learn how much each one takes, then you know how much to add. So you'll slit your pattern down the middle and then bump the pattern out however long you got to go. And I was making, uh, let's see if I've got one here, kind of a version of it. It's a single pleat, 
but it's still kind of a box pleat. It's an inverted pleat. And so it, I can actually put my finger all the way up to the neckline hem there. And that took a little bit to figure out too, because it folds in from one side and then folds in from the other side to create this center pleat. And you just have to figure out how much from here to here do you want? And then you got to add that to your neckline here so it goes out and then it curves up. Yep. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> oh, thanks, Mary. Yeah, this is um this is another little jumper that's gonna end up going back be going back onto the website. I pulled it off last fall because so I wanted to mess with the pattern a little more because I'm trying to get sizes. And so I have for this size, but I wanted to make sure I could size it up and make those a little more. Oh, I know what you're talking about, Michelle. Um, it's really not ruching in that sense. It's the elastic. Um, there's a word for it, and I know it, and now I'm, I'm just, I'm having memory lapse here. Um, What is it called? Shearing. It's shearing. I knew I was going to get it. Yep. So the shearing you do with this real thin, it looks like an elastic cord. And it's like a heavy thread. And that's part of what you do the shearing with. And then you zigzag over it. Yeah, no doubt, Michelle. It is easy for that. It's always fun, though, watching them try and pull that up, though, when it's wet. You know how it is. We all been there. <laughs> That's just like a feat in itself, trying to get that back up. But yeah, that that roof, that uh, the shearing definitely grows with the child. Yeah, yeah, because you've got so much fabric there that it just kind of naturally expands, and you really can't even tell until the child's just way too big to wear it. Period. You know, because it's probably like all of a sudden hitting them here when it used to be down to their knees. You know. <laughs> Now, also, Michelle, you can buy, sometimes you can buy the fabric to make those dresses that's already done. So the shearing's already done. And then you just buy however long you need. You zip up the seam, put the straps in, and decide how long you want it to be and put the, put the uh, hem on, and you're done. So that's always a nice little fast way if you're in a hurry to make a bunch of those. Oh, Mary, you're going to wish these days were here when they're all grown and gone. You're like, oh, I want them back doing this potty training thing. <laughs> yep. And those are nice and fast because it does take a while to share something. It really does. It's fun. Don't get me wrong. It is fun. But you've got to have time and just some patience and the ability to sit and just do it slowly. And then it's fun once you've picked it up and you can do all these little these little areas here, you can also do them where you do out of cotton and they don't stretch. And so that's a whole nother detail. And I know you've seen those on those little baby dresses 
where this whole part is all sheared, but it doesn't move because it's made out of cotton. And so then they just put it down solidly. That's really easy to do. Super easy and super fun because it doesn't have to be really perfect because it just kind of does miss miss mash all, all over through here. So it's just a whole bunch of gathers that you put in. So you run all your gather threads and then you pull them one at a time and you put them real close together so that they just create all these little gathers. And then you go back and you sew them down. And a lot of times I'll put a piece of fabric on the back and sew them straight onto the fabric too. So it just gives it a little bit more stability because you don't want that one to move. And then you just cut that out as your pattern piece. So I would just do a piece of fabric, however big, and just redo it. And then that piece that you want cut out of that, it's already done. You don't have to worry about trying to calculate everything. You just lay it down there and cut it out. And just realize though you might be cutting through some of your stitched threads. So very ends of it might come undone just a little bit. So there's ways around that too, if you guys want to know how to do that. Oh, of course, Mary, which is good for you because it gets it done quicker. Yeah, so true, Michelle. Yeah. Yep. But you know, you can buy it, but a lot of times it's not on the fabric you want it on or the fabrics that you have available to buy aren't really what you were looking for. So knowing how to do it though is a good thing. And if you're not going to do the stretch one, the other one's so easy, so easy. It wouldn't take very long to make one. And especially if you're just doing little kids like a bodice or something, your fabric's only really got to be when you get done about like that. And you're just a little piece. So it'd be like a fun little project. One day you just want, I just want to sew. I don't want to pay attention to anything. I just want to sew. So you just do all your little, your long way of doing ruffles. So you sew your, your uh, long stitch and you gather it by hand. And that's how I would do it. And I'd use a heavy, heavier thread and I might even do it by hand. And then that way I can use a real heavy thread and it won't snap when I go to pull. And then I pull the next one, pull the next one, and then you sew through and make sure it's all good and solid. And then you can pull out that heavy thread if you want. Hey Z, thanks for joining. Thanks for hanging. I hope you had a good weekend with your family. I know you were going to go hang out with them after we got done with your live yesterday. So hope you had a good time. Shearing it and, and um, Nara, I'm going to correct your spelling only because I want you to go look it up too. And you can see it on out on the web. There's a lot of tutorials, but it's S-H-I-R-R-I-N-G, shearing. And so if you put that in, it'll bring up a lot of examples and stuff. So um, I don't know if I have, I had a top a long time ago that was knit. And I brought it down here because it was getting all stretched out, but it was a sheared top. Um, do I have it? Probably don't have it right here. Okay, so if you go and put that in, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Trying to find a real good picture here. Some of these pictures are hard to see. Okay, this will probably be a good one. Okay, Nero, this is sharing. So this is a sundress. And if you can see right here, if it'll ever focus and if they'll focus but it's stretchy it's real real stretchy and it doesn't want to focus on it let 
There, maybe this is better. And then that ring light just gets, there we go. That shows it really good now. That's shearing. And then this part is really stretchy. So it's done with elastic. And so you, you're able to really stretch it. And it fits everybody then, obviously, really well. It's a very common thing. I'm sure you've seen it now that you know what it is. Very common in the summertime for a sundress. Hey, Julia. <laughs> yeah, no, that's shearing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say, it's a very, if you don't know that that's what it's called, you don't realize it. And then you see it, you're like, oh, yeah, I've seen that because it's been around forever and ever. Yeah. And look up the tutorials, Mary, if you do want to try it, because um, it's, there is the stretchy shearing and then there's the shearing that you'll see in a lot of like toddler dresses from retro times. And that is not stretchy, but it's done the same way. It's just one's done with an elastic thread and one is not. And then usually the, the stretchy one is made out of knit. And then the elast the non elasticized one is out of cotton. Oh, they don't. You know, Julia, you know what I've heard is um, you've got to go in and when you subscribe and hit the notification bell, I think you have to go one step further yet and you have to go in and tell it to notify you of everything. I think it just defaults to, um, I can't remember what Angela said, it defaults to the top videos or just an occasional video or whatever. So you have to go in and change the settings, which I don't know why these websites are doing this, but you have to go in and change settings practically all the time on everything if you want to get every notification. And I've had to do that on Facebook. I've had to do that on Instagram where they'll just kind of give you random notifications. So I don't know what the uh, reasoning is on that. Yes, Sarah, exactly, exactly. That's the exact principle. Yep, yep, Michelle, exactly. And that's what those little girl things too were where they, they do all of that on the cotton. And then you'd see where they'd go over it like in diamond patterns too in a different fabric. I mean, they did a whole bunch of different things on them. Yeah, go look that up, Julia. If not, um, I'm on every Sunday night, 6.30 Central Standard Time, if that helps any. And then every other week is the Sew Along. <laughs> Mary, yeah, you do need a Joann's run again. I can't find that stuff in our Joann's anymore because they've, they've changed up what they're offering in ours. So um, they used to have that every single summer. And you could always guarantee you could get like a white sundress and it was like an eyelet. And then there would be a couple other colors and then they would have some other patterns. They would have like some of the real pretty um, Mexican print ones with the bright colors and everything and big florals like the Hawaiian prints and stuff. Now you can't even hardly find them in the Joann's anymore, but I know you can still get them. I know they're still popular. <laughs> Leslie. <laughs> Yes. And like Michelle says, they grow with the kids and then they become tops too. You know, they, they'll wear them out. They literally will. If you get them in the right print that they love, they'll wear that thing for probably five, six years until you literally have to peel it off of them to throw it away because it's so threadbare. Oh, thanks, Julia. No, Michelle, then, then that's not a bad thing.
Mary, I also saw Google DIY bias tape maker. I saw something not too long ago that somebody had made, I think out of cardboard. And I was watching them use it and I was like, that's genius and it will work every time and you can make it whatever size you want. So Google that and see. And I can't remember, it was just like six months ago and I need to go find it again because I wanted to make a couple of them just to have around. And, the, and they, sh they actually showed them using them and it worked. It worked beautifully. And I think it was just a matter of they were able to, they made like a U shape out of cardboard or whatever. And they put the fabric down the middle of it somehow. As I say, it's been just long enough. I don't remember. It was, I was shocked. I was like, I need that, not the, the store-bought ones because it was perfect. <laughs> Michelle, she did her own kind of mashup, huh? <laughs> Whether you liked it or not. Yeah, some of the pre-made bias though, Mary, I'm, I struggle with it because I, when I use the bias tape, I don't like both sides to be ironed in because that one side I'm always opening up to sew along. And then I've got the wrinkle from where it was creased closed. So I almost like it to only have the one side with the crease set in. And then that way I can sew the other one in, even with my serger, flip it over, iron it real nice and go from there. Oh no, Sarah, that's frustrating. Yeah, I think that's why that um, cardboard one struck me so much because it tended to make it more the way I liked it. Oh man, Sarah, oh, that's frustrating. That is so frustrating. There was something else I was going to bring up. And I can't remember. Oh, let me show you the, um, I also did some fabric, guys. So I still had some dye left over from when I was doing the onesies. So I just did some cotton fabric. And tie dyed that just to use up my my dye. So I will probably use this as lining for bags. So yeah, it's it's quite fun. I did it quite a while ago too with some other fabrics. I mean, I got crazy one weekend and just, and this is only just some of them that I did, but I was like needing a break mentally. So I just died up a whole bunch one weekend and it's so fun and addicting that I'm just like, you know, I'm going to just have to start doing this a little more and use these as bag linings and start making bags again. But they're so fun to make. And you can do these with your kids. This one I especially like because it's got reds in it. And then the deep greens. And then this one was cool too. With the chartreuse yellow. And it's kind of a, it's actually a maroon. It looks a little brown on the camera there. But it's, a, it's more of a deep maroon. So lots of things you can do 
Oh, good night, Sandy. Lots of things you can do just with plain cotton. This was linen. This was a piece of linen I had. And this, I think the rest are cotton. Yeah, the rest are just cottons. But the linen is nice. It's got a good hand to it. And it took the dye in kind of a different way than the cotton did just a little bit. It was really kind of cool. So that was a lot of fun. But yeah, there's a whole bunch more over there. I'm not going to show you every single one of them would we'll be here a while. But like I said, I was having fun one weekend because I was like totally brain dead. And I just needed to totally let everything go. And so this was kind of the way I did it. Okay, good night, Leslie. Yep, absolutely, Michelle. You are so right. All right, ladies, I have to get up super early tomorrow. This is my what we call hell weeks. I've got a couple of hell weeks ahead of me for a project that's closing out, so I have to travel. I have to get up really early tomorrow morning and be gone all week and then be back next weekend. We'll be doing the quilt along next weekend, though, guys. Um, I've still got to sew my quilt top. <laughs> I haven't done it yet. So I got to do mine before I can have the quilt along. So it might be it won't be right away Saturday morning because I won't have it done yet. So I will post when we're going to do that. It'll be probably Monday, maybe. Maybe Sunday. Maybe I'll do my uh, my normal time Sunday night. I didn't want to, but it might end up being that way just because I'm traveling. So, but I'll let you guys know. And we, if nothing else, you can just hang out and chat while we do the quilt along. So, but anyways, yeah, thanks. I'm done. I'm ready for this traveling to be over. I've been doing this for seven months now and I'm just, I'm done. I'm done. I'm ready to be back at home for a while. So, hey, Liz, I'm just signing off, sweetie. I got to get up super, super, super early in the morning. I feel bad that you just got here. Didn't get a chance to chat with you. So, good night, Sarah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, go back and watch the replay. You'll get to watch me screw it up. <laughs> and else you'll get a good laugh out of it. You can text me your comments while you're watching. <laughs> I'll still laugh. <laughs> but yeah, um, anyway, I will definitely see you guys next Sunday. And um, maybe it'll be twice next weekend. Just I haven't decided when the quilt's along. I've just got to do my quilt up yet first. <laughs> so yeah. But uh, anybody wants to still join in, you got plenty of time. You'll beat me if you still start this week because I won't be getting around to it until I get back home again. So. But, oh, no. <laughs> so, anyway, guys, this was fun. I know this was a quick one tonight. And we had a little chat time. And um, I love having these evenings with you guys. So, we will talk to you later on. I will be dropping into the lives as I can this week. I'm going to need some chill time for sure. So, you guys will see me. I'm not going to be off the planet. But I may not be quite as engaged as I would like to be. So, I will be there. I might be lurking. So if I do a random comment every now and then, I'm lurking because I had a few minutes. So anyway, you guys have a good rest of your evening. Have a good start to your week. And think of me, please, this week. Okay. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. I love you. Bye.